Hey guys, welcome to my first drive video on Cupra's 4Mentor VZ3. But this particular press car comes with the £9,000 apt performance pack. It's a limited dealer fit only option. Cupra are bringing 160 packs into the UK. And when you factor in a couple of other options that this 4Mentor has, including its black paintwork, well, this particular car has an on-the-road retail price of £60,000. An extra few grand would buy you BMW's X3 M40i. What does that £9,000 performance pack offer, aside from maybe that subtle black apt badge on the boot? Well, before we open the bonnet, I can tell you that it gives you an upgraded braking system on the front axle, a gorgeous pair of Brembo calipers and bigger discs. It gives you these 20 inch apt lightweight alloys which have the perfect fitment on them. There's no way that this car left the factory like that because it looks like it has 15 mil spacers on it. It's absolutely spot on. It gives you some apt lowering springs, but unlike the wheel fitment, it doesn't look like it's sitting much lower. When we get around the back, we've got a beautiful Acura exhaust system, although I believe it's just the rear box because replacing the whole system in this day and age is close to impossible. Under the bonnet, we have an apt engine controller. I assume it kind of works like a tuning box and basically gives this two litre four cylinder turbocharged engine an extra 60 horsepower and 50 Newton meters of torque. So that means that this four mentor is sitting at about 370 horsepower and 450 Newton meters of torque, which aren't massive numbers, but this weighs 1600 kilos, which is a lot lighter than other sporty SUVs of a similar size. That X3 we talked about earlier on, well, that's around two tons. That power and torque is fed through a seven speed DSG gearbox and to the ground via all four wheels. Cooper claim that this app performance pack version will do the 0 to 62 sprint in 4.6 seconds. That's 0.3 of a second quicker than a four mentor two litre without the tuning box. And we're gonna test that out shortly. And the last couple of parts from that performance pack make their way in here. And the first and main ones being these beautiful carbon cup bucket seats. They are gorgeous to look at, incredibly comfortable to sit in, and of course, very supportive. They also save you a little bit of cabin space. So if you are running your four mentor as a family car, you actually get more legroom in the back seat now because the backrests of these front seats are a lot thinner, a bit like the carbon buckets that are in or optional in the M2, M3 and M4. We get an apt starter button down here and unfortunately the last thing to talk about are these horrendous paddle extenders. I don't really know where to start with them. They look like a joke, they look like a set of elephant ears or something. They feel and operate terribly. I just don't understand where they've come from. If you have a performance pack for Mentor coming, make sure you tell the dealer to throw your paddle extenders in the bin because they literally have no positives whatsoever. Your friends and family are gonna jump in the car and laugh at these because <laughs> they are beyond a joke. But aside from those, the rest of the upgrades a really nice, tasteful, and do actually offer you some added performance, as we're about to find out when we get this car on the road. First things first, let's test out this car's claimed acceleration figures. Cooper say it will do the 0-62 sprint in just 4.6 seconds. My race box Mini is now set and ready to go. I'm in Cooper mode, which basically gives me a stiffer chassis, better throttle response, etc. I've got the traction control and the stability control set to sport because it seems to get off the line better with launch control in sport than when everything is switched off. My left foot is hard down on the brake. My right foot is now 
on the floor. Launch control program active, here we go. Really strong off the line, lovely fast gear shifts, and there's 60 miles an hour. 4.49 seconds to 60 miles an hour. You can add a tenth of that to 62, and that brings it to 4.6 seconds, which is exactly what Cooper and Apt claim. In terms of driving position, well, it's a Volkswagen Group car, so it's never going to be perfect like a Porsche 911 or the majority of BMW M cars, but it's not too bad. And I think that these cup seats definitely help with that. I just always get the feeling that the steering rack seems to come up at such an angle, almost bus-like in a lot of Volkswagen Group cars. And I think that just affects the ability to get the perfect driving position. The only other minor niggle that I'm not gonna talk about, although I am, because we're now talking about it, is the infotainment system. But if you're looking at buying one of these, you're probably already aware of this being a little bit hit and miss. It's definitely got better over the years with various software updates. Rewind three years and my first experience in Cooper's four mentor, and I really, really like that VZ2. I remember thinking at the time it was one of the best overall packages for just under £40,000. It's no big surprise that this tweaked and improved version is also really, really good. In fact, spoiler alert, it is better. But is it £60,000 good? That is the question. Ride quality is actually really rather good, especially when you consider that this car is riding on 20 inch wheels. And a lot of that has to do with the standard fit DCC, which is dynamic chassis control. A very important option to have on the majority of Volkswagen Group cars, especially their sporty cars, cars like the Volkswagen Golf R, which is pretty much what this car is under the skin. Dynamic chassis control gives me, the driver, 12 different increments of how stiff or how soft I want the car to be set up. And the good thing with that is when I cycle through to my individual mode, I can set that exactly how I want it. So I can dial it in perfectly for a UK road, which is not perfect at all. None of them are whatsoever these days. The end result is you're left with a relatively sporty car that feels like it's almost running on air. Like the ride quality is very, very good. I remember thinking that about the regular VZ2 and this car with the bigger wheels, but well, still rides exceptionally well, even when you've ramped that DCC up towards the stiffer end. It flows really well. It has a nice fluid motion and as we'll get to a little bit later, it supports the car and its mass extremely well. Did I notice that extra 60 horsepower and 50 newton meters of torque the second I got behind the wheel of this car? I didn't, because in normal driving, it feels pretty much the same as the base car, which isn't a bad thing because that definitely doesn't feel underpowered. But to me at least, where I feel that extra power is up above about four and a half thousand RPM. Below that, it feels more or less the same. So when you rev it out, let's put it in a second, there we go, four and a half, five thousand, it absolutely <laughs> literally takes off because that bit of road is quite undulated, but it does take off in the sense of fires you down the road. Once you get above 5,000 RPM, it is really, really quick. But you've got a small 
RPM window there, 5,000 up to about 6364, then you hit the red line. And annoyingly, as with so many Volkswagen Group DSG boxes, if you have it in manual and you pull these comical paddles, we're in second now, you put your foot down, I don't touch a paddle, it changes up. It won't hold it in gear. And I know some people will argue that there's no problem with that and why do I have an issue with that? Well, sometimes it is nice if you know that you're going through a particular section of road or you're on track, you want it to stay in that gear. Even if you do, just nudge the limiter. You don't want it to then change up just as you're about to get on the brakes. And that's slightly frustrating. But the way it revs is just unreal. And I have to say, when you're changing back down the box, so we're coming into this left-hander here, pull for second, it gives me second, even though it's revving now at 5,000 RPM. Older DSG boxes wouldn't do that. They were sometimes very hesitant about giving you a lower gear, even though you knew that it was possible. In terms of the way it sounds, well, I haven't had a chance to listen to this on the outside because I did the flybys earlier on today, so I'll hear them when I get home and edit this video. Um, but I'm sure that exhaust makes a little difference, but being that it's 2024, there are so many restrictions on sound, etc., that unfortunately it's not going to completely transform this car. On the inside, it's hard to tell what is organic and what is being piped through the cabin, which isn't a bad thing because as we know earlier systems that pipe sound through the cabin well they are very easily recognizable as fake and in fact that four mentor that i had three years ago when you put it into cupra it sounded like a five pot they literally pumped rs3 sounds through the cabin which maybe some people found exciting and cool but to me it just was a mismatch because this is a four cylinder <laughs> it's not a five cylinder thankfully they've removed that five pot sound when you put it into cupra or any of the um various drive modes so now you're just left with what sounds like a four cylinder engine which is absolutely correct and i would say that it's just about right you do get some <laughs> pops from the exhaust again i think they're organic Let's see if we can get some as we're slowing down into this town there we go hopefully the cameras pick that up maybe windows open for this last one. Oh, there we go another standout feature is this car's brakes at 60 miles an hour <laughs> unreal unbelievable the stability of this chassis especially with these bigger wheels and wider profile tires we've got two five five section tires all round a square setup in this car so the combination of the good but supple chassis with that dcc that we talked about and the wider rubber and those incredible brembo brakes just means that this car really does stop as good as it goes in fact it stops better what's its handling like well we're coming up to a great set of twisties here i'm in my individual mode still so everything is relatively stiffened up but not uncomfortably so coming in here shift down to third turn in i'm even getting a little bit of steering feel again ask for second we get second foot down out of here we've got all the traction in the whole world once it gets above 5000 rpm as we talked about it is so fast this car it really is <laughs> i can feel a lot of what's going on underneath me thanks to these seats you always get that with sportier seats especially bucket style seats you can feel a lot more through your buttocks than you would otherwise and also this relatively commanding driving position i'm certainly sitting higher in here um, overall than i am in let's say my m2 or my m3 
and that allows me to look down the road a bit further I can see over those hedgerows a little bit better and I can just navigate myself safer down a road like this I can see any pedestrians or horses or cyclists coming up a lot easier than I would be if I was in an out and out sports car so there's always an argument to sporty SUVs as to whether they are perhaps better than your average hot hatch or sports car down some of our narrow-ish country roads because of that extra and added visibility. It's also handy when you're on the motorway, you can see a bit further down the road, see if brake lights are happening further ahead. I still prefer a nice low driving position on track days, etc. It's definitely better because your sense of gravity is lower on the road sometimes a slightly higher driving position does allow you to look further ahead and this car again has got a lovely big windscreen to look out of what's my verdict on this four mentor vz3 with the apt performance pack well i'm not going to sit here and suggest that you should run out and spend your hard-earned £60,000 on one, although it is a very good and unique package. And unfortunately, in 2024, this kind of represents relatively good value for £60,000. There's nothing else out there that's jumping out apart from maybe the X3 M40i that offers you so much practicality, so much performance, and so many good looks, in my opinion, in one package. I think this car's biggest problem is probably the base version, the 48,000 pound VZ3, before the performance pack, because at under £50,000 it really does appeal and I would urge you to run out and buy one and although the performance pack definitely adds performance as it suggests it adds nicer looking wheels and a nicer looking stance it adds better brakes and a slightly better sounding and better looking exhaust it's not a necessity but if you can afford the monthlies or the outright extra money to buy a performance pack version then it's definitely worth it it's a bit like let's say BMW's M3 CS is that car worth an extra 30,000 pounds over an M3 competition on paper probably not because it's only a little bit better in a few areas but when you add that all together it is definitely a better package and I think if you can afford the M3 CS then you go for the M3 CS if you can afford a performance pack on your four mentor then go out and get one because it definitely improves everything bar these horrible paddles <laughs> to an otherwise already very very compelling package so I am impressed with this car I have enjoyed my week with it it's lived up to my expectations of how I remember this car being three years ago and as we talked about that performance pack has definitely made it better in pretty much every area. Oh.